Man that is born of woman hath but a short time to live. And the same goes for budgies that are born of egg. Even less in their case, I guess. The real difference is in the send-off. Fairly involved in our case, and pretty negligible for feathered friends. However, Bill the Budgie, the hero of our story, is an exception. He has a memorable family send-off. The story is About Bill by Athel Henry. It's from Australian Short Stories number 19, published by Bruce Pascoe. I'm your reader, Kim Dodsworth. Bill the Budgie is dead. Inconsiderate little bugger just leant off his swing and nosedived into the shell grit. Well, actually, there was a little more drama to it than that. Howard's grandfather left him in the sun. A real scorcher of a day. When Bill was found, he was in a bad way. Sticking his head in ice water did little to revive him. In fact, it probably did more to do him in. George suggested mouth-to-beak resuscitation, but it was Goldie who threw the towel in. He's dead. Nothing you can do about it. Heartless old bag, padded around the house in furry slippers, telling everyone she'd buy another one at the market. But it's not the same. Poor old Bill. Howard watched his grandfather bury Bill in the yard. It wasn't a solemn affair. One scoop of the spade and Bill was dropped in. A few words were said. Cheerio for now, by Howard's grandfather. Howard just about stuck his face in the hole, almost got buried with a bird. He wanted to know where Bill was going. Where's Bill off to, Pop? he asked. But Howard's grandfather was a bit deaf. Kids are born inquisitive, but weariness wins out, his grandfather would later say. Every family in Mintro had a dog. Some even had budgies. Sasha the dog was very old. She didn't bark much these days, mainly grunted. Howard's grandfather, who was also old, also grunted. When he walked out into the kitchen in the morning, he would look at the clock and grunt. On sunny days, he would sit on a barbecue stool in the yard amidst the long grass and grunt along with the dog. A constant battle waged between Howard's mum and the kikuyu grass. It had made her bitter towards the yard. George said the kikuyu grew with a vengeance and could strangle a cat. Sasha's days of digging had passed, or at least almost passed. No one suspected she'd dig up Bill's grave. Sasha knew where Bill was going, but she wasn't telling anyone. That evening, Howard went to ask his mother where Bill was off to. Walking up behind her, he stood barefooted on the cold lino just thinking. Howard was like that, a thinker. George called him Bubbles because he had a big head. A tenacious little brute questioned the hell out of everything. No sooner had he blurted out the first word of his question when his mother turned from the stove and almost took his head off with a plate of hot spuds. How many times have I told you not to stand behind me when I'm at the stove? One day you'll have the whole lot fall on top of you. It was Goldie who dragged Howard by the arm and sat him at the table. Despite near decapitation with a blunt pot, Howard was not put off. What do you want with your mother anyhow? Goldie asked, or rather yelled. An imposing woman, large in stature and voice, with black eyes and jowls which shook when she yelled. She had lived with Howard's grandfather for a long time and assumed the rest of the world was deaf. She was up to her elbows in cucumber salad, reeking of garlic. Fists full of cucumber were squeezed until oil and vinegar ran from her fat fingers. The pulp was then thrown into the bowl, a red plastic bowl. The cucumber slapped against its sides like a drum. An obscene sight, Goldie working on a salad, transforming cucumber into an amorphous glob, the consistency of soup. But Howard, due to his tender years, continued, Where's Bill gone? Don't be stupid, Goldie yelled. He's dead. You don't go nowhere when you're dead. That's it. Kaput. Except, of course, if you go to heaven. The salad slapped against the bowl in a slow, steady rhythm. Goldie sucked in her top lip before she spoke again. Bill's gone to birdie heaven, where cats are in cages and birds sing all day long. Da da da! She sang a polka while flapping her arms in small circles, dripping oil and garlic on the floor. Da 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 da! She continued. George rolled his eyes to the ceiling and said, Hallelujah! Of course! If he's going nowhere, he must be going to heaven. Watch a turkey breath! Goldie sneered. 
outspoken like a true believer. Religious rights for animals. Just think, Nan, if Bill had religion, maybe he wouldn't have been in a cage. Maybe he wouldn't have been left in the sun. Maybe the passenger pigeon would be alive today. Stop it! Howard's mother fairly peeved. Don't talk about such rubbish. I mean, such things in front of Howard. Her voice trailed off as she looked down at the potatoes. Jeepers, Goldie muttered, is out in the yard, buried in the ground. But Bill was under the kitchen table. Sasha had snuck him in while no one was looking. You got more pepper? Goldie yelled and went to look in the cupboard. Goldie padded her way back to the table. She bent down, squatted as far as her heavy frame would allow. Her jaw slackened and her jowls quivered. Jeepers, she yelled. George looked under the table. Jeepers, he whispered in awe. Gracious God, Howard's mother exclaimed. But Howard simply said, Bill's back. Bill was back. He was lying between the front paws of grinning Sasha. Limp and dirty, a small spectre, but no less significant. Sasha's tongue lolled from the corner of her mouth as she watched faces appear under the table. The family watched in silence except for Howard's grandfather, who whistled on in oblivion. Don't touch him, Howard's mother implored. Flush it down the flippin' dunny, Goldie said dryly. Easy, Nan, George said scornfully. Bill deserves a decent burial. He pulled a handkerchief from his back pocket and tied it around his neck, pulling it over his nose like a surgeon. Grabbing a pair of barbecue tongs, he carefully reached under the table, holding the tongs outstretched before him. Such was his crouch position, he began dithering like an idiot, as if the bird would explode or more likely, suffocating from the hanky. You're not going to pick him up like that? Howard's mother wrung her hands, annoyed and muddled by the evening's event. Get some paper! She hastily looked about the kitchen for some. I'm not picking him up with my hands. Why, it's not shit! Goldie yelled. It's worse. It's dead. Sasha, sensing something was wrong, slunk between the fridge and the pantry where the ironing board was kept. Bill's presence, inert as it was, sent the family into a quandary. George paced about the kitchen until he thought to look in a cupboard. This proved fruitful. He returned with a mop and a broom. Scissoring the handles, he approached the table with a tentative ambivalence of a novice dowser. He squeezed the bird's body between the ends of the handles and lifted it up to the centre of the room. As remote as a coffin, Bill was held a respectful broom handle's length from anyone. Howard looked up in amazement. George said he'd rebury Bill. A proper burial, not just a pauper's hump, a grassless patch in the yard, but a house brick headstone with something nice written in texture. As George made for the back door, he scotched the light bulb with the handles. Bill nose-dived into the cucumber salad. Fut! Jeepers! Goldie yelled. Look what you've done with the flippin' salad! Her horror-stricken face peered over the rim of the bowl. Relax, Nan. I'll just bury him along of the salad. George eased the bowl from under Goldie's face. Bill was totally hidden except for a darkish patch in the brown sludge, which was how the salad looked when viewed through red plastic. To find anything in the yard shorter than a clothesline was hard. Finding Bill's grave and the fading light was almost impossible. But George said he knew the terrain. Just walking through the grass was difficult. It whipped their ankles and tore at their sneakers. Cucumber slopped down the front of George's shirt from the bowl clutched under his arm, a brick in the other arm and a felt pen wedged between his teeth. Howard followed him, waist-deep in Kikuyu, and beating it back with a stick. How come we have to bury Bill anyway? he shouted to George. So he doesn't stink, George hissed through the pen, talking over his shoulder. Also, so you can't see him except in a memory fading into fuzzy images with distorted sound. Hazy ghosts with uncertain names. The reception's so poor, you eventually look at the listing headstone and can no longer remember what all the fuss was about. Howard whacked at the long grass and wondered what in the hell George was saying. They walked on until George found Bill's grave. In fact, he trod on it. Almost whipped his neck out, dropping the brick on his foot. The brick made a mess of George's toes. He spat the pen and sent the bowl flying across the yard. Bill's last flight into the grass, never to be found. The evening meal was left untouched. Howard's mother, annoyed at George's expletives in damning falling headstones, had a headache. 
Goldie brooded over her dinner plate, pushing potatoes from one side to the other. Even Grandad didn't feel like eating. Howard sat at the table and wondered where Bill was off to now. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story. I'm Kim Dosworth. See you next week.